look familiar? <laughs> and doesn't it get a little twisted in the stomach when you wonder how many people are gonna comment and validate your existence in another existence called social media? We've created a reality on top of a reality that now has become more important than our actual reality. Is it just me? <laughs> if we wanna obsess about scale instead of soul, then we might wonder what happened to our soul one day, just like I did. It was a hot, humid day, August 28th, 2005. The Video Music Awards had just happened. We were scheduled to have Kanye as a guest on Total Request Live. At the time, arguably the most popular show of our generation. <laughs> no pressure, Q! <laughs> okay, so... There was an after party to the Video Music Awards where Kanye was getting honored and Suge Knight got shot. So as a live talk show, it's assumed that we're gonna cover the hot topics. That day was a very hot topic. Kanye came to the studio and our segment producer went and did a pre-interview with him in the guest room. I was on the other side of the studio getting ready backstage. The pre-interview happens and allegedly Kanye told his producer he absolutely did not want to talk about what happened at the club last night. Understandably, he's there to promote his new music video. Meanwhile, I'm backstage five minutes out from going live and the producer comes and gives me an update on the conversation she just had with Kanye and says he'd rather not talk about what happened. What if I just refer to the event on the way to a broader question that then he can run with and we can pivot off of that and potentially not incriminate him? <laughs> and so there we were live in front of millions of people. And I say to him, considering what happened last night at the Video Music Award after party, what's your thought on the current state of hip hop? But Kanye stopped listening when I said last night and he snapped, I saw something in his head just snap. And then he looked to the side of the cameraman where Pam, let's call her Pam, the producer. <laughs> Pam was standing there. Kanye looks at Pam and says, I told you not to ask me that. Live on international television. Woo, I got hot in the kitchen. <laughs> And I looked around at the studio audience and everybody looked as mortified as me. And I said, okay, I uh, think it's time for the next video of the countdown, yo, what do you think? <laughs> Whoo, here it is, in sync again. <laughs> and so immediately after getting off camera with Kanye, I look at Kanye expecting his head has exploded at this point. But instead, he looks down and he looks over at me and he says, Caduce, I'm sorry. I just don't know how to handle things like that. And then I lowered my head and I said, I'm sorry to bring up stuff like that. In that moment, I realized I had sold out. I had effectively made views and visibility for the show more important than my values. And isn't that what happens so much of the time? Something happens on camera, millions of people see it, something different happens off camera. Most people don't. And then we wonder, we wonder why we have the culture we have. So I took a journey. I did some work. I looked at the man in the mirror. Something needed to change. I didn't like who I'd become. The irony is that I'd heard recently I was rated as one of the most popular hosts on the whole network, but I didn't even love myself. And it took some time, it took a couple years, but my journey ironically led me back to television, to an entertainment news show. You can tell I needed a stylist at that point, so that's a whole nother journey, but you know, anybody who watched Living Color probably appreciates that. Usher happened to be going through a divorce at the time, and the executive producer of the show pulls me into his office, knowing that I'm friends with Usher, and he says, hey, I got an assignment for you. 
It's with Usher, and he's got a new music video, and we want to talk about his divorce. And we talked to his publicist, and the publicist specifically said not to talk about the divorce, but I want you to go for the jugular anyway and ask him. But in this moment, I thought, not today, not today. And so we didn't get the headline. We didn't get all of the clicks. But that day, I walked away with my dignity. And I walked with a different posture. You know, when you stay true to yourself, it's a whole different get down, isn't it? And so I was also clear that the values that I held at that point were not aligned with this show. And I promptly left, despite the money on the table, despite the views. And of course, it wasn't an easy decision. And I had years of looking back and saying, could I have done something different? But sometimes you got to know when to gracefully graduate in life. And then I went on another journey. And I realized that talking to a friend of mine during that journey, his name's Ryan, like a soul brother, told me about the experience I was having, this deliberation, this looking back in the rearview mirror, this second guessing, this doubting. And he said, you know, sometimes our compass can just be a few degrees off. But you know when you're at sea, the compass is just a few degrees off. Over a long period of time, over a distance, that turns out to be an entirely different place. And that's how I felt. I didn't recognize the man in the mirror those years before, but it was real. It's a real moment for me. And this new compass led me to my father's homeland in Haiti. The mission was to give out solar generated lights. And I met a young man, his name's John. And John didn't even have any shoes on. As we were walking back to our Jeep, John was telling me about how it is being an orphan. And there wasn't one ounce of shame in any of his commentary, but he walked with more dignity and joy than most people in the business that I had just left. And so there I was realizing, wow, my head had bought in to this idea of success that my soul was not aligned to. There in Haiti, I was realizing something that Hollywood could never land for me. For some reason, it was experiential all of a sudden. Leave it to a young man in Haiti to teach me that lesson. This compass led me into something different than fame. It led me into a fulfillment. And that is really the intersection we're talking about here, right? When we break it down. But fame has the kind of impact of a drug, right? It's kind of that dopamine hit. You get when your post kind of goes viral, you know what I'm saying? It's like, ooh! But then I noticed something about this compass. It hit a little different. There was this resonance. It was like this depth of joy that sort of transcended a dopamine hit. And it hit the engine room. You know, it felt like a Patti LaBelle song. (laughs) And then I came across this quote by Jim Carrey, which really solidified things for me. I think everybody should get rich and famous and do everything they ever dreamed of so they can see that that is not the answer. This is what Stephen Covey, an incredible author, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, he talked about what it means to focus on our circle of influence, because it's so overwhelming when we think about what happened in 2020. We think about what happened to George Floyd and so many other people. Every situation can seem so overwhelming, but then when we actually focus on our circle of influence, things become a little bit more practical and possible. And so Stephen Covey's theory was that so many of us get caught up in the circle of concern. I want 10,000 more Instagram followers. And we forget about the people in our circle of influence. And how often does that happen? How often did I miss my mom's call because I was too busy making media? How invested are you with your circle of influence such that eventually your circle of influence grows? And so I made my life's work this type of conversation. It starts with step one. Y'all wanna get a little work in? What really lights you up? Beyond the headlines, beyond all the conditioning we go through, what really lights you up? And then what does that mean about your identity? What do you really get to own about yourself? Like in that moment, when I saw what my producer was asking me to do with Usher, in that moment I decided. Sometimes it takes something experiential, but here's a moment to get conceptual at the very least. Who do you really 
get to be from this point on. I have a whole new intention. I have a whole new compass. I have a whole new coordinate that I'm set for. And so there's a different impact possible at that point. Knowing what you know about what we just talked about, what's going to be different? What's the compass now? What's the coordinate you're setting your life to? What does that mean about your next step? What does that mean about what you post next? What does that mean about your influence? Thank you.